it is appropriate that the officer who knelt on him is charged. It is appropriate that the charge is third-degree homicide, which is a manslaughter. As far as the other officers are concerned, I still don't know enough to know uh, their level of complicity, but there should be some sort of level of complicity. I'm not sure what it's going to be. I suspect the DA is working that out as well. Now, my complaint with a lot of people like you is that because you don't like my politics, because you don't like my support of Trump, who knows what it is, I will say something and you won't hear it. Or it'll go into your brain, go through the synapses of your brain and come out the other ear another way. I've been doing radio since 1994. And every single year somebody calls up and says, now Larry, you always say there's no such thing as racism, comma, on the way to making some other point. And I always stop them and I say, excuse me, excuse me. Can you tell me when I said or wrote that there's no such thing as racism in America? Now, did I defend the beating of Rodney King? Leo Terrell and I were arguing uh, this afternoon on the Sean Hannity show. And he told me about a woman, and I recall her name was Margaret Mitchell, a black homeless woman who had a a sawed, um, a sharpened uh, screwdriver and kept it with her, probably just for safety, because it's it's dangerous being a homeless person. And uh, two cops on bicycles approached her. She had a shopping cart. And they wanted to know whether or not she owned the shopping cart. Are, are you, I know, I know, I know. And she pulls out the knife and apparently makes some sort of move towards one of them. And they blow her away. And she was five foot, weighed about 100 pounds. I think she's about 65 years old, homeless lady. And these two officers couldn't deal with that without using deadly force, I felt. The police chief, who happened to be black, Margaret Mitchell happened to be black, and the police chief came on my, my program once a month, once a, one day a month uh, for a couple of years. And, of course, this case came up, and I told him what I told you. And he defended the shooting and told me that a knife was a deadly weapon and lawfully the officers could do what they, were, do what they did. And I couldn't believe it. My point is I didn't defend that. I told you. When those six officers were arrested uh, in Baltimore after Freddie Gray died, I said, they're not going to get convictions. And I got a bunch of calls from people telling me, here you go again. I said, I'm talking about this from a legal standpoint. The burden of proof is really high. It's unclear how this man died. Certainly unclear whether or not they intended for him to hit his head in the truck and and break his neck and die. I said, you're not going to get convictions. First trial, hung jury. Second trial, not guilty. Third trial, not guilty. Three, the next three of them, they said, forget about it. They dropped the charges. Waste of time, waste of money. The community was told this, that, and the other. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. I said, no, it won't. Then the community is going to be dis- dissatisfied, disappointed, and they're going to feel that there was another uh, judicial uh, injustice dealt when, in fact, there wasn't. They never had the sufficient burden of proof. And instead of being responsible and saying that, they caved, they charged them, didn't get convictions, and now people are still ticked off thinking that the criminal justice system didn't work. Why are we having these confrontations in the first place? Why aren't people complying? My father told me one more time from the time I can remember, make sure when you are pulled over, your left hand is at 10 o'clock, your right hand is at 2 o'clock. Make sure your paperwork is in order. Say yes, sir. Say no, sir. And if you feel you're mistreated, get a badge number, and you and I can go downtown and deal with it while you're still alive. Why isn't that message being told? Well, these kids don't have fathers. All sorts of consequences. A, black, a poor black kid with a mom and a dad will have a better outcome in life than a middle-class white kid with only one parent in the house. I repeat. The formula for success in America today? Think tanks on the left, think tanks on the right. Three things. Finish high school. And that presumably means a high school where you can read, write, and compute at grade level. All too often that doesn't happen. That has to do with the quality of our schools, the failure of the parents to have choice in school, something Republicans want, but Democrats don't. But I digress. The second thing is don't have a kid before you're 20. The third is get married first. You won't be poor.
it's not like police brutality has not been studied. It's been studied over and over and over again by the feds. And this alleged institutional systemic structural racism that the left keeps banging on about, that Leo Terrell used to until very recently, where's the evidence? Where's the proof? Why aren't people like Leo Terrell forming the, these big consortium for class action lawsuits against all these legal departments because, after all, they're all out there practicing racism against black people. Where are the lawsuits? Let's deal with these things on a case-by-case -case basis, okay? My goodness. They're having riots also in, in uh, St. Paul, right next door to Minneapolis. Mayor of St. Paul's black. Doesn't matter. It's so sick on your part, you don't defend blacks like George Floyd. I'm defending George Floyd. He shouldn't have died. Did I stutter? Am I speaking Ebonics? What do I need to do here? What I'm asking you to do is have perspective. Don't riot for four days when you have a sympathetic mayor, when you have a police chief of color, when you have a city that has a reputation for being progressive, when... The officers were fired summarily without any due process. When one of them has already been arrested and you're still out riding, they expect another day of riding? I don't understand. I thought you were all about Martin Luther King. He is a god, isn't he, in, within the black community, within the, in, the, in the country. He was about nonviolence. Yeah, I know a growing number of young uh, blacks are becoming more and more militant, he said, but I will stand up and defend nonviolence if I'm the only one doing so. All this damage done to property values long term, burning down your own neighborhoods. And can we cut to the part where they bitch, moan and whine and accuse the very same businesses of racism for not wanting to rebuild? Can we cut right that to that point right now? I'm Larry Elder. Want more of The Larry Elder Show? Just go to youtube.com forward slash The Larry Elder Show Radio and 